Rev up your engine! Here we got a typical problem. A nice Camry, but when it's cold, it backs up, you can get a clunk of noise in the front. And of course, at the dealer, they tried to sell them the farm. So, let's jack it up and check it out. Now, these are real easy to jack up. Because as you can see under here, there's a nice solid lump right in the middle. You can put your jack on right there, nice and solid. You got to jack up one side and the other. Ah, not these cameras, you can jack them up right in the middle. So you got all kinds of working room on both sides. No, this vehicle was bought pre-owned, it was you. So we don't know the history what the previous owner did. It's awful new for a Toyota, so I don't expect to feel anything. And there isn't anything that's really worn. We'll check the other side. And just as I suspected, there's no real play on this side either. Let's take off the wheel and check it. If you don't want to put the expense into air tools, electric impacts are perfectly fine for doing wheels and stuff like that. They're awful big. You can't fit them in tiny holes, but they're great for taking tires off. So nobody gets crushed. There. Now we can check it all out. Now, unlike cars in the past, all modern cars have no grease fittings. So, you got to check all the rubber bushings to see what kind of shape they're in. And there's, here's something I don't like, okay? The stabilizer bolt. They used to make them out of metal. Guess what? Not a hunk of plastic. <laughs> really, Toyota, you didn't have to go that cheap. Now, often as they age, these rubber joints here on the lower control arm, they'll often go. Now you can see it's got those little bitty thin cracks in it, but that's totally normal. I've had more people come in, oh, the dealer told us, look, there's little cracks, you need to replace all that. Expensive job? No, my 94 Celica has worse cracks than that, and it still works perfectly fine. You'll often get superficial cracks. If they're cracked in half and they're making a lot of noise, yeah, but these are totally fine. Here's a motor mount, and a good way of checking that is just starting the car up. Yeah, it's pretty stationary. If it would have wobbled up and down a whole bunch, it would mean it was cracked, but it isn't. Now, when we check the bottom side here, here's a lower ball joint, but as you can see, it's perfectly dry. It's not ripped or torn. There's nothing wrong with that. And the tie rod's nice and stiff. It's not clunking or bouncing around. Let's pop the hood and check the top of the strut. We're here in Tennessee and you might say, what the heck are those? Well, those are supposed to make noise so that the deer don't crash into it. That's not the source of this noise because humans can't hear that frequency. Can't say whether they work or not, but he's never hit a deer, so. <laughs> Why tempt fate? I'd leave them on too. The upper strut mount is here and it's all rubber inside. And if they crack, what happens is they'll clunk because the metal will then hit metal because the rubber's ripped. But when they do, this will sink down. When you jack the car up in the air, as you can see, it hasn't sunk. I'll we'll go to the other side. Same thing. That strut mount's nice and solid. It's not ripped. And you won't expect them. Those things can go 10, 15 years before they break. And this thing isn't that old. So let's pull off this wheel. Off it comes. Do the same process here. You know it's plastic. It's still solid. The stabilizer bolt. And we'll look down here. You can see. This is pretty much the same as the other one. You can see small striations, but there's really nothing wrong with it. And as we look under here, the ball joint's solid again. It's not leaking grease. Everything's pretty solid. The only thing wet is because you got the car washed. <laughs> so there's no obvious structural problems. Now I have seen this before, and it's often the rubber bushings just will make a noise once in a while because instead of like when I was a young mechanic in the 60s where they had grease fittings, you'd grease them, the grease would go inside and lubricate it. These are just bare rubber on metal. And as they age, often you can get a clunk now and then. So, here's something I've been doing for years. No, I don't spray aloe on the car. It's an empty bottle. The aloe works good on your skin. I don't think it can do much to a car. I use this AT205 reseal. It is a polymer. It rejuvenates rubber. So, simple process, poke a hole in it, open up the empty aloe bottle and pour it in. Now it looks like water, but it isn't. It's a polymer. It rejuvenates rubber. So what we're gonna do is, all the rubber parts, we're gonna spray. And especially where there's any kinds of bushings. Like down here in the middle, right here. 
We're gonna spray those. There's one side. You can't see it very well, but there's another side too. We're gonna spray that. Any place where there's a fulcrum. There's also one in here. We'll spray that. And just for kicks, we'll spray the top. This is all rubber. And we'll do the same here. And the strut mount here too. Now what happens is, this rejuvenates rubber. It gets it more pliable. So if it's clunking because it's not pliable, hard rubber, hit metal, it can make a clunk. Now, we already found out it's structurally safe. Doesn't check out high or anything. When we look at the tires, you can see they're evenly worn. There's no cups. They're not worn in the middle. And then big on the outside or big on the outside and worn in the middle. They're very evenly worn. So there's real no suspension problem with this vehicle whatsoever. Now it didn't do it when he originally bought it used. It only started doing it about a year ago. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We're gonna take it for a road test now, but it's warmer so it might not make any noise. But that shows me that it's nothing that's really structurally wrong with the vehicle. Say it had been in a big wreck. Well, when he bought it, it would have shown up right then. You would have heard the noise. And it went over a year without doing it, so got the wheels on, now we'll take it for spin. Well, here we go. Now this is how they're supposed to sound, nice and quiet. <laughs> Look, it's fixed, it's fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Only time will tell. So, it's not making it now. If it comes back, it doesn't mean anything. But let's say it goes away for nine months or a year. Amazon sells this stuff. Buy a bottle of it. Spray rubbers all with it. Any kind of rubber. I put it on windshield seals. Your windows where they roll up and down, that rubber can deteriorate. This keeps them from deteriorating in the first place. It's got a lot of uses. Some guys even put it on the grips of their golf clubs and then the sweat of their hands doesn't eat it up. So, hey, now you know how to check out a front end, see if you have a problem. Now he doesn't have to worry about the dealer telling him, well, he needs to replace the control arms for $1,500. It's stable, there's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes a little noise doesn't mean all that much, but it can make a big bill if you go to the wrong place to get it analyzed. So why not do like I just did? Figure it out yourself. Save a ton of money or come visit me. <laughs> and here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, if you're into vehicles and mystery, you'll find this interesting. In some California parks in the desert, well, near desert conditions, there's two 1929 Lincoln pickup trucks. Yes, Lincoln pickup trucks that were dumped in the desert and nobody knows the history behind them. Since it's all dry there, they're not particularly rotting away. There's still a bunch of pieces left on them. Now, this was at the Joshua Tree National Park, which of course, those are the oldest trees on the planet. They don't look much anymore. They're kind of like little bushes, but they're old as can be. They did have mining there a long time ago. And I'm assuming what it is, is uh, the guys were there mining, whatever, the car broke, they they just abandoned it and it sat there forever and since it's dry hey it didn't all rust away to nothing and they're still sitting there now the vehicles were 1929 lincolns that someone converted into trucks back in those days they had just a certain amount of body styles and frames and you could change a truck to a car, a car to a truck relatively easily because they were simple vehicles and things just bolted on and off. Back in the day, uh, my grandfather, when he was a mechanic way back then, you know, in 1920s, 1930s, he said one of the reasons car parts were relatively expensive in the United States was because if they sold them with just a small profit margin, the parts, people were actually building their own cars because they found out they could buy all the parts to a car and put it together themselves. Cars were much simpler in those days and people would have actually built their cars. So they made the car part prices higher so that people wouldn't build their own cars. <laughs> it's kind of like a modern day scenario was a few decades ago, people were always like, why those Toyota engines are great. You know, let's buy new Toyota engines, build our own car. Well, Toyota will not sell engines to anybody. You can't buy a new engine from them. You never could. And I think they were thinking, hey, maybe people are going to buy our engines and build their own cars. No, they got to buy the whole car with our engine in it. And they had the same kind of idea back in those days. Uh, on the desert, there's these abandoned Lincolns that were turned into pickup trucks that are now in the middle of nowhere. But of course, there's a logical story. And mine is miners or something, and they just abandoned it. Or it is kind of semi desert there and way back in those days who knows they might have been stranded in the desert and died and the cars were just there and nobody bothered to go pick the things up i remember years ago when i was driving from one end of canada to the other on a trans canada highway they had these big curves going up 
in the Rockies. And I thought, I wonder what happens over there. And I pulled over and looked down. There were a bunch of cars at the bottom <laughs> that had made over the curb, flipped over, and landed in. And I asked the Mountie at the gas station. I stopped. I said, what are all those cars doing down there? He says, it's too much bother getting them. Unless it's like a Ferrari or something and we get a crane to pick it up. We just remove the bodies out of there and then leave the cars. And they've just been sitting there for decades at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> So, there's only two of them here. There, there were scores of them under the hills. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.